Hey, everybody. I'm Alicia Purdy, publisher of The Way of the Worshipper. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm reading the Bible through in a year. Today is day 243 of our one-year Bible reading plan, 365 days in God's word. You'll never be the same again. Neither will I. That is the whole point. If today is not day 243 for you, Go ahead and go back and start on day one. You don't have to catch up. You're not falling behind. If you've made a commitment to read the Bible through in a year, start at day one and just keep working through. The whole point is to spend the 365 days getting God's word into our hearts and increasing in just not just knowledge, but also understanding. And with that understanding comes great wisdom. The word of God is living and active and powerful. It goes forth. It does not return empty. It will accomplish what God sends it to do. And he will watch over his word to see it performed. If you're taking notes, that's Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. It's Isaiah 55, 11. It's Jeremiah 1, 12. You can trust God's word. That's why we're getting it in these doses, spending a year of our lives in the Bible. I don't know about you, but I have definitely needed it in this year in particular. And whatever year you're encountering it, God will be faithful to his word. Whatever it is you're walking through, his word will light the way. I have resources linked below from the way of the worshiper.com. They are for continued study and understanding, expanding out on things that relate to each day's reading as it comes up. Check those out for getting understanding. That's something that's been my heart as not only a Bible teacher and a journalist and just a sister in Christ as well to get understanding. So those are there along with a reflection sheet where we now can reframe it and look at God's word in light of ourselves and our own journeys and our own thoughts and process through some of the things that we encounter in God's word. It's time to hit the thumbs up button underneath this video to open today's reading, making sure you watch the entire video. Make sure that you've hit subscribe so that you get notified when content comes out. And if something blesses you, leave a comment below, a scripture verse, a testimony, a word of encouragement. Not for me, although it is very encouraging for me, but other believers, or not even unbelievers, they will come by someday. They will find the way of the worshiper and they're going to read your comment. It's a great way to testify and get God's word increasing in these dark spaces, the light of God. Remember the dark, the uh, darkness is not the absence of light. Darkness is the absence of God who is light. And let's shine that light into the dark spaces. Okay. We're going to open with a word of prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. And thank you, Lord for the reading of your word. I am so grateful with my brothers and sisters in Christ that where two or three are gathered, you are here in our midst. We invite you right now to come and have your way. We too need the words of life. We need the light to shine in our dark places. We seek you in your word because you said that we could seek you and you would be found when we seek you with all our heart. We love you, Lord. We want to look more like you and act more like you and think more like you. Change from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord, for your great faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are continuing on in the book of Job in our Old Testament reading. We've now switched gears in the book of Job. The first the first big chunk of Job, about two-thirds of Job, is Job contending with his friends. His he these friends came and these three three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, three not so friendly friends who came to mourn with Job and throw ashes on themselves, and they just kicked him while he was down. And Job has had to contend with them, saying, I didn't bring this on myself. I have done nothing wrong to deserve any of this. And he's right, but he does live under the law of sin and death. And unfortunately, bad things happen to good people. I've experienced that in my own life. I'm sure that you have experienced it or seen it in life around you that even the righteous have bad things that happen, not because God is bad or that he partners with evil, or which is sometimes a teaching people mistakenly talk about in the book of Job. It's not because God uses bad things to teach us good lessons. No, no. God is not complicit with evil. God is light and there's no business with light mixing with dark. That's what Paul said. What happens is that because of the law of sin and death, sometimes people's sinful choices come upon us. Sometimes we are under the attack of an enemy, our adversary, who's the Lord said, what have you been doing? Although he, of course, knew what the enemy was doing. He wanted him to say it out loud. He wanted to say the quiet part out loud, roaming about the earth, seeking to devour. So that's where we are with Job. The Lord said, you cannot take his life. The enemy cannot take your life. But does he have access through sin? Yeah, unfortunately he does. So the three friends are kicking Job when he's down. Job has constantly shaken his fist at God, which is okay. We can do that. God already knows we're doing it in our hearts anyway. Might as well pour out so he can fill us and empty ourselves. That's okay. But what 
what's happening now is Job is now becoming so focused on this righteous resume that he's becoming, he's setting himself up. He's elevating himself instead of saying, I'm innocent. Now he's saying, I'm righteous. Now that isn't true. No one is righteous. There's none righteous. No, not one. So now we have a new, we have a new player on the scene here. This is Elihu. He's a younger man who said, I have sat quietly and I have listened to everything that you guys have said. You older men, you have no answers for Job. You've just condemned him. Job, you're starting to lean too much on your own understanding, on your own righteousness. And Elihu has come along and he is reframing the way that we think about God. And he's reminding them, no, here's what God looks like. And you would not elevate yourself above God. He's still God in the end, and he's still worthy. And we need to remember that as people, we're just people of clay, as Elihu said. So that's where we're continuing today. We're going to read Job 34, 35, and 36. This is Elihu, the young man now talking, saying, hold your peace. I'm going to teach you about wisdom. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, hear my words, O you wise men, and give ear unto me, you that have knowledge. For the ear tests words as the mouth tastes food. Let us choose justice for ourselves. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God has taken away my judgment. Should I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinks scorn like water, who goes in company with the workers of iniquity and walks with wicked men? For he has said, it profits a man nothing that he should delight himself in God. Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding, far be it from God that he should do wickedness. There it is. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness and from the almighty that he should commit iniquity. He will repay a man for his work and cause every man to find what is according to his ways. Yes, surely God will not do wickedly, nor will the almighty pervert judgment. Who has given him charge over the earth or who has set in order the whole world? If he sets his heart on man, if he gathers unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together and man will turn again to dust. If now you have understanding, hear this, listen to the voice of my words. Should he who hates justice govern? Will you not condemn him who's most just? Is it fitting to say to a king, you are wicked, and to princes, you are ungodly. Yet he is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment they all die, and all people will be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty will be taken away without a hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he sees all things. There is no darkness nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves, for he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. He will break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their place. Therefore, he knows their works and he overturns them in the night so that they are destroyed. He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him and he hears the cry of the afflicted. When he gives quietness, who then can make trouble? When he hides his face, who then can behold him? Whether it is done against a nation or against a man only that the hypocrite should not reign, lest the people be ensnared. Should anyone say to God, I have borne chastisement, I will offend no more. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to your mind? He will repay whether you refuse or whether you choose, and not I. Therefore, speak what you know. Let men of understanding say to me, wise men who listen to me, Job has spoken without knowledge and his words were without wisdom. My desire is that Job may, Job may be tried unto the end because he answers like wicked men for he adds rebellion unto his sin. He claps his hands among us and multiplies his words against God. Now here we are in Job 35. Elihu spoke again and said, do you think this is right that you say, my righteousness is before God? For you said, what advantage will it be to me? What profit will I have if I'm cleansed from my sin? I will answer you and your companions with you. Look into the heavens and see and behold the clouds that are higher than you. 
if you sin, what do you accomplish against him? Or if your transgressions are multiplied, what does it do to him? If you are righteous, what does it give him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness may hurt a man like you, and your righteousness may profit a son of man. Because of the many oppressions, they cry out. They cry out because of the arm of the mighty. But none says, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth, who makes us wiser than the birds of the heaven? There they cry out, but he does not answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity, nor will the almighty regard it. Although you say you do not see him, yet judgment is before him and you must trust him. But now... Because he has not punished in his anger, nor taken much notice of folly. Therefore, Job opens his mouth in vain. He multiplies his words without knowledge. Now we're in Job 36. Elihu continued and said, Bear with me a little, and I will show you that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. I will bring my knowledge from afar and will ascribe righteousness to my maker. For truly, my words will not be false. He who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Behold, God is mighty and despises no one. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He does not preserve the life of the wicked, but gives justice to the poor. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but they are on the throne with kings, for he establishes them forever and they are exalted. If they're bound in chains and held in cords of affliction, then he shows them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. And he opens their ear to discipline and commands that they turn from iniquity. If they obey him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But if they do not obey, they will perish by the sword and they will die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart keep up wrath and they do not cry out to him when he binds them. They die in their youth and their life ends among the unclean. He delivers the poor in their affliction and opens their ears in oppression. Even so... He would have removed you out of distress into a broad place where there is no restraint. And that which was set on your table would be full of riches, but you are filled with the judgment due to the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you. Because there is wrath, beware, lest he take you away with a blow. Even a great ransom cannot deliver you. Will he esteem your riches? No, not gold, nor all the force of your strength. Do not desire the night when people are caught off in their place. Take heed. Do not turn to iniquity, for you have chosen this rather than affliction. Behold, God is exalted in his power. Who teaches like him? Who has prescribed his way for him? Or who can say, you have worked iniquity? Remember to magnify his work, which men behold. Every man may see it. Man may behold it from afar. Look, God is great, and we do not know him. Nor can the number of his years be searched out. For he draws up the drops of water. They distill rain according to its mist, which the clouds drop down and drip on man abundantly indeed. Can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds or the noise of his tent? See, he spreads his light upon it and covers the bottom of the sea. For by these he judges the people. He gives food in abundance. With clouds he covers the light. He commands it to strike the mark. Its thunder declares it. And the cattle also concerning the rising storm. That's the end of our reading in the Old Testament. I love what Elihu says here. Every man may see the magnify the magnification of his work. Every man may behold it from afar. We see that written in Romans chapter one as well, that the glory of God, the existence of God is written in the hearts of all people so that they are without excuse when they reject him. That's what he's saying here as well. Tough words, but very convicting. Take a minute someday when you've got a minute to sit down and read. Read these words of Elihu and reflect on what he's saying about the character and nature of God with awe and reverence and respect. There are things we all walk through, but the badness of life does not change the goodness of God. That's why we turn our faces to the Lord in our worst times, not our backs. All right, let's go over and read in the New Testament. Reading today, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Some of my favorite scriptures in this book are what we read yesterday, and that's where we last left off, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. And we all seeing the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces as in a mirror, 
are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the spirit of the Lord, saying that the law was a veil over our eyes, but now the spirit has unveiled us so we can see the Lord. Only God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We should be being changed from glory to glory as we see God by the spirit of God. That's where we're picking it up right now. Therefore, since we have this ministry through mercy we have received, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the secret things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by expressing the truth and commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden to those who are lost. The God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, the excellency of the power being of God and not from ourselves. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And always carrying around in the body the death of the Lord Jesus, that also the life of Jesus might be expressed in our bodies. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that also the life of Jesus might be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. That is the end of our reading in the New Testament. Check out the resources I have linked below from thewayoftheworshipper.com, especially about renouncing the secret things of shame, as Paul is talking about here. We all have those secret things of shame that sometimes we walk through or we carry as burdens on our back. And what does that look like? So that's linked below for continued study. We're going to go over and finish up with a psalm and a proverb. Reading today, Psalm chapter 44, verses 1 through 8. This is for the music director, a contemplative Mescal of the sons of Korah. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work you did in their days, in the days of old, how you drove out the nations with your hand and planted others instead, how you afflicted peoples and sent them away, for they did not take possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand and your arm in the light of your countenance, because you had favor on them. You are my king. Oh, God, command deliverances for Jacob. Through you, we will push down our opponents. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor will my sword save me. But you have saved us from our opponents and have put to shame those who hate us. In God, we boast all the day long and give thanks to your name forever. Selah. Think about it. There it is. In God, we boast all the day long. Can't save ourselves. I love that what he's saying here, that it's God, that it wasn't our own arm. It wasn't even our own sword. But we see in the old covenant that people did have to physically fight. They had to actually take their sword and fight against people. But over and over what we see is, yes, maybe you draw the physical sword, but the, the battle belongs to the Lord. He, this David said earlier, by my God, I can run through a troop. I can jump over a wall. This is why we don't trust in our bow and our sword. Even when we have to use them, it's still not in our own strength when the battle belongs to the Lord. Yes and amen. Okay, let's finish up with the proverb. Reading today, Proverbs 22, verses 10 through 12. Cast out the scorner and contention will go out. Yes, strife and reproach will cease. He who loves pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king will be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthrows the words of the transgressor. Oh, that's a good one. That is it. Day 243 of our Bible in a Year reading plan is done. Tap the thumbs up button to close out today's reading. If that's the way that you do it, make sure that you've subscribed to the Way of the Worshipper. Just tap the little subscribe. And if anything blessed you today, leave it here for another believer 
or an unbeliever to come by and read someday. The word of God is going to advance online, go forth and not return void. I am Alicia Purdy, the publisher of The Way of the Worshipper. Let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the reading of your word. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to put our confidence in the bow, in the sword, even when we have to wield it that the battle belongs to you. Help us to never take credit for the things that we accomplish because what success could we ever have apart from your hand? Father, whatever battles we face today, whatever seasons that we're in right now, in the name of Jesus, we seek your face. We renounce the secret things of shame that prevent us from coming boldly to your throne in worship, in glory, in prayer. Father, we need you. We cry out for more of you. And so... We give you more of ourselves. Show us with revelation, Father. How do we navigate what we're walking through? It's our desire to honor you and never elevate our own righteousness over your true justice. We love you, Lord. You're so good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.